Okay, so we're starting statistics, and statistics is the first part of applied maths that we're going to be doing. Um, and really, this is a big overview of what statistics looks like at A-level. So it says here that the chapter of stats year one could be broadly organised as followed as follows. So we've got these two halves of things. We've got the experimental half. Experimental means that it's dealing with experiments. It's dealing with data that has been collected. And so we're going to start off today with data collection, which is talking about how you sample things, different types of data, populations and samples and things like that. And then we're going to come to some really familiar kinds of things like averages and range and some other familiar things about how you represent data things like box plots and histograms, stuff that you've come across at GCSE. And then I've got this chapter of correlation, which is to do with scatter diagrams. That kind of falls in between both of these things because there's a mixture of some of the real life collection and some stuff to do with theoretical statistics as well. So the second half of statistics is theoretical statistics, which deals more with probabilities and modeling to make inferences or predictions about what we expect to see. Um, and we often use this to reason about or contrast with experimentally con collected data. So this is going to be like real data that you will be doing things to. This other half will be about making predictions and then comparing it to the original data and seeing what kinds of patterns there are. So that's basically going to be probability, different types of probability distributions, um, and then something called hypothesis testing, which we'll be coming up to right at the end of this because it's definitely the hardest part that we have here. So we're going to start off with data collection today. And for the data collection, um, this is what it kind of breaks down into. We're gonna break down into thinking about populations and samples, different types of sampling we've got here, different types of data, and then something called the large data set, which I'll tell you a bit more about when we get to it. So let's kick off and think about what the definitions are. There's a lot of definitions in statistics. So I've printed as many of these as I can in your booklet so that you can have them to refer back to. So this set is about populations and samples. I've got a picture here to represent the population, and then a subgroup of this population is called the sample. Now, the population is the whole set of items that are of interest. Now, it's probably used to, you're probably used to hearing the word population, meaning all of the humans or animals within a country or an ecosystem. But a population in statistics could mean other things. It could mean all of the light bulbs in a factory or all of the cars in the UK. So population doesn't mean people or animals in statistics. It just means all of the things in the particular group that we're looking at. And then a sample is some subset of the population intended to represent the population. So you take a, a smaller group because taking the whole group is often going to be a lot more work. So that's what we mean by population and sample. And any time I've got some of these things underlined, they're often like the key parts of the definitions that we need to know about. So some key terms to do with sampling here that you need to know. Each individual thing in the population that can be sampled is known as a sampling unit. This isn't something you just need to understand. This is something you need to know that a sampling unit is each of the individual things within the population. Often, sampling units of a population are individually, individually named or numbered to form a list called the sampling frame. So in this particular uh, population that we've got here, we could assign each sample unit a number, which would then create a list, which is called the sampling frame. So the sampling frame is like the, um, yeah, just the database of, of all of the population that exists. So we need to talk about some differences between populations and samples. It says that we could collect data either from a sample or from the entire population. This is another key word that we need to know about. It says that data collected from the entire population is known as a census. Have you heard of a census before? Yeah, a census is, they do that I think once every 10 years in the, in the UK where they try and get a, a response to a survey from every single person and it's a huge, huge undertaking. So some of the advantages of a census is it should give you completely accurate results because you're speaking to absolutely everyone in that population that you're talking about. But a disadvantage of doing a census is it's really time consuming and it's expensive. So that's why we don't have a census every year. We have it every 10 years and even then it's a huge, huge undertaking. This cannot be used. You cannot do a census when the testing involves destruction. So, for example, if you wanted to find out how many biscuits were a machine filled into a box or a bag in a factory, 
if you had to open up every packet of biscuits to find out how many biscuits were in the packet, you can't do a census in that factory because all of the biscuits they've been making in those packets will have been opened up and will go stale. So you can't do a census if it's going to destroy everything that you've got. The other disadvantage is there's just a large volume of data to process, and that takes a lot of work to be able to do that. So why do a sample? Well, it's cheaper, it's quicker, there's less data to process, but the disadvantage is, is that the data may not be accurate, depending on how you've taken that sample, and the data may not be large enough to represent small subgroups. So let's just talk about when the data may not be accurate. When we've seen, like, after elections, often there will, be there will be polling before an election to try and predict who will win the election, or even things with, like, Brexit, and then when the result actually comes out, it hasn't reflected it carefully, and that's because the, uh, the election itself, or the referendum, is trying to be more like a census of speaking to everyone, whereas when they do the polling, that's just speaking to a smaller sample, so it may not represent the whole group. So let's just have a look at an example here before we'll do some practice questions from exercise 1A. It says that a supermarket wants to test a delivery of avocados for ripeness by cutting them in half. And it says to begin with, suggest a reason why the supermarket should not, not test all the avocados in the delivery. So why shouldn't they test all the avocados in the delivery? They're going to destroy all of them. They're going to damage all of them. So they shouldn't uh, test all of the avocados because testing destroys or damages the avocado. And that's a really bad idea because you'll have no avocados, even if they're ripe or not. And then it says the supermarket tests a sample of five avocados and finds that four of them are ripe. They estimate that 80% of the avocados in the delivery are ripe. Suggest one way that the supermarket could improve their estimate. Yeah, they could increase the sample size. So pretty straightforward, they could increase the sample size because a sample size uh, of five is very small. Increase the sample size, five is a very small sample. And so it sounds pretty straightforward about what we're talking here with populations and samples, but I just wanted to look at all of the questions in exercise 1A to begin with, because these are the questions in the exam that people think, oh, they're really easy, they're just like a one marker or a two marker, but they actually tend to be the questions that people actually miss the most. So I want to go and have a look now at exercise 1A, and I want to work through all the questions that we've got there, okay?